Hello and welcome to Streets of Gotham, an actual play stream following a crew of Gotham City Rogues. I'm David, he, him. I'm a graphic designer, an illustrator, and a game designer. You can check out my tabletop RPGs over at dbb-8.itch.io. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter, at Brutman. And tonight, we are, as you can maybe see from the screen here, doing something a little bit different. Just myself and Marcy. Marcy, introduce yourself, and then let's tell the people what we're up to. Yeah, well, uh, as many of you know, I am Marcy, aka Experimental Madness. I'm a writer and an editor by day, and then by night I play wild and crazy characters right here on Manapot Studios. Uh, and uh, tonight uh, we're doing something a little different. It's a lot of fun. I'm taking a brief uh, pause playing my usual character of Jackie, uh, and I am playing her sister, Miri, Miri Ripley. Um, so we're going to see some cool stuff that is happening outside of Arkham. So tonight we are <laughs> shifting away from our usual uh, Blades in the Dark hack for a very slightly modified version of a game called Breaking the Ice. <laughs> a very by, slightly uh, modified version. <laughs> Listen, it's more, it's less modified than the modifications that we usually do to things, right? That's true. Uh, so this is a game called Breaking the Ice by Emily Care Boss. Um, so if uh, if you like how this goes, uh, go check it out. Also, go check it out if you don't like how this goes. I, I don't want to, I don't want to put our nonsense on <laughs> on any other creators. Um, and we are going to be uh, flashing back away from our main story, our escape from Arkham Asylum in progress, to some earlier events involving Miri Ripley, uh, Marcy's character's, uh, Marcy's other character's sister, and <laughs> one That's My second doctor... cousin twice removed. <laughs> yeah, y you know. Uh... And one Dr. Jonathan Crane, who uh, has become rather notable in the escape attempt uh, and maybe has some history with Jackie's sister that we're going to learn a little bit about tonight. So we're going to flash back in time and we are going to play Breaking the Ice, which in its normal form involves a series of of three dates, uh, <laughs> at the end of which we figure out if our characters uh, become romantically involved or not. Our version is gonna a be different. a little more chaotic, a little more feral. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, very true. We, we are gonna be using this system to examine the beginnings of a uh, non-romantic relationship between Miri and Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. Scarecrow. Uh, and instead of dates, we will have a series of encounters between the two of them where they will begin to get to know each other, figure out what each of them is about, and at the end, we will see how their relationship shakes out, which... Of course, we'll have implications for what goes down with our main crew back in the asylum as they try to escape from oh, Under Scarecrow's watchful gaze. Um, yeah, so this is a GMless game, technically. Um, so I have abandoned my normal role of DM, uh, and Marcy and I are just going to be kind of collaborating, riffing. It's going to be a lot more freeform. Uh, do you want to get started? Yeah, let's do that. So this game is, again, all about collaboration, which means we both mutually get to decide on setting our first scene and what happens within that. So, David, I have to ask that, and this is fun. How do you think there is... How does this first meeting come about? Okay. So here's my pitch. Interesting circumstances, yeah. <laughs> I have a very specific idea, which I realize <laughs> I should have talked to you about off air. Um, oh God, no, tell me now. It. Well, here it is. 
Okay, so I think we are going to start our first encounter at the Bad Batch, Miri's Bakery. Uh, it's, uh, I think, night, and Miri is closing up um, when she hears a noise in the back alleyway. So, um, why don't you set the scene for us? Uh, yeah, tell us um, what the Bad Batch looks like. Uh, give us a, a shot of Miri, uh, what her deal is, and tell us what she's doing as she closes up her bakery for the evening. So most of the store lights are already switched off. She's locked uh, the doors, uh, at least for the front entrance. Um, she's mostly in the back. She's put up the chairs. Uh, she, I think, is probably putting away some pastry dough she's like fridging overnight to make things a little bit easier. Uh, this kitchen setup is really unique. Things are pretty uh, much lower to the ground um, and the fridge has like multiple doors, but the entrance handle is a little bit shorter because if you would notice, uh, Mary Ripley uh, is using a wheelchair um, and she's wheeling herself around uh, her, her kitchen sort of uh, shutting off, making sure all the ovens are, are off, uh, wrapping up uh, some some cookie and pastry dough and cling wrap and putting that in the freezer in the fridge. Um, and uh, you see uh, a young woman uh, in her, er, looks to be early, in her early to mid twenties. Uh, she's got a very retro style to her. looks like she came straight out of the 1950s. Uh, she's got uh, very, very dark brunette hair, almost black. It's uh, in that like, kind of rockabilly curl a little bit. Uh, she's got immaculate makeup, uh, and she's wearing a green and white polka dotted vintage dress uh, that the apron sits like rather like puffily over the front of the wheelchair. It gives like, it a nice, like, very... I don't know fashion, so this is great for me to pick a character that does. <laughs> um, rather kind of like a poodle skirt. That's what I was looking for, feel, uh, at, the, yeah. at the hemline. Um, so she is, she's shutting everything up, and I think, what kind of noise does she hear, David, from the, from the alley, which is probably near the kitchen? I think there's a door in the kitchen that goes immediately out into the back alley. Yeah, I mean, this is where, like, you would, you would head out here to, like, throw the trash in the dumpsters, right? So I think yeah. you hear, uh, you hear kind of a, a crash of the dumpsters. Something sort of falling from uh, a height uh, uh, of some sort, and like maybe one of the you know the smaller garbage cans like clanging over to the side. It sounds like uh, I mean I think you would immediately your first assumption. Um, maybe if this wasn't Gotham City would be like <laughs> like raccoons. Ah, shit raccoons have gotten into the trash again and have knocked something over it's that kind of noise yeah but you know instead of raccoons in Gotham you just have oh a super villain <laughs> yeah yeah kind of the same issue really uh huh uh huh <laughs> I think uh, I think hearing that uh, Miri stops and almost very casually wheels her way over to a corner in the kitchen and unlocks uh, a locker, pulls out a shotgun, lays it on her lap, rolls over to the door, <laughs> and tentatively opens it. So you see what you would expect to see uh, in in the back alley, given the noise. Uh, I think you do... you see this you know this is lit by like a single uh a single street lamp down at the end of the alley or maybe like a, a light just above the door uh you know just like a, a single uh, a single light bulb yeah. kind of situation and um you <laughs> i'm trying to decide how detailed to be here okay so you do see <laughs> you do see the knocked over you do see the knocked over trash cans um and uh, you see a, a lump, a figure uh, in, in shadow sort of, uh, sort of crumpled on the ground. Um, and I think maybe you just hear like just the faintest, like 
leathery wing flap cape kind of noise uh, from the buildings above, like above on the fire escape. But if you look up, there's nothing there. Uh, and you, there, there's this figure on the uh, on the pavement here, uh, kind of uh, kind of groaning, uh, and you can see them. Uh, they've sort of like. Uh, uh, it, it seems like as you open the door, they've kind of taken something off of their head, uh, and uh, you see this uh, this guy kind of look up at you, uh, um, and sort of uh, he he looks certainly worse for wear. Uh, I think he's a uh, he's a um, he's a tall, thin man you can tell this even though he is he's crumpled in a bit of a heap on the ground but you know he's he's just a he's just a pile of limbs kind mm -hmm. of uh, uh and i think he's wearing um he's wearing sort of a rumpled suit um and he has uh this sort of like floppy rumpled dark hair uh, that's that's kind of flopping over his face, uh, which I think is sort of uh, angular and gaunt. Uh, he's a fairly young guy. Um, probably, probably he, he looks like not too much older than you, but probably a little bit older than Mary. Uh, I, uh, and I think... and he, he, he looks up and uh, he just kind of moans like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, God. So I think Mary puts the shotgun like she just puts it balancing it on the door and like wheels her way down the ramp uh into the alley and she's like i are you are you okay you, uh, hang on hang on she like reaches down and is gonna try to help him up to bring him inside yeah um i i don't know the degree to which miri notices this but uh i think he uh you know he sort of lets you drag him to his feet a little uh, with him. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and he sort of kicks to the side back behind the dumpsters, some sort of burlap sack looking thing. Jeez, I, I swear to God, it gets worse in the city every day. Um, so just the other day, two of my baristas almost got jumped out here. Yes, it's a rough town. You can say that again. I think she's she's like trying to wheel with one hand and like support him <laughs> with the other arm, but she eventually gets back up into into uh, the Bad Batch and sort of shuts the door behind her and uh, tries to shove the shotgun <laughs> further into the corner. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not going to use that. <laughs> Hey, can, can I can I get you anything? I can I I still I haven't shut down everything on in the front. I can uh, get you some tea or coffee, uh, some ice, perhaps. I'm a little bruised. Yeah, yeah. Um, sit down. Uh, I'll be right back. Um, she goes to get some ice and pull out a first aid kit over by where she probably keeps the OSHA clients. <laughs> um, billboard or poster rather in the back sure uh, she 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 wheels she wheels herself back with it it's like hey hey I've got uh, some ice a couple of bandages neosporin I got the works uh, if you uh, if you're cool with it I can help I see all kinds of stuff uh, late at night here I would appreciate that all right. All right. Well, sit tight. Um, she takes everything out um, and she starts getting to work on some of the like, how bad does he look? Is it just bruises or does he have some like cuts or or scratches? I don't. Yeah, I don't think there are any uh, any cuts or scratches like he's definitely bruised. I think he he sort of loosens his uh, his tie, uh, takes off his uh, his jacket uh, and uh, and kind of starts uh you know maybe unbuttoning his shirt a little bit he has maybe like a, a tank top 
uh, under there, kind of lifts it up, and there's like a really just nasty, you know, like black and blue green bruise uh, along his side, uh, and probably Jesus, who did you, you know, piss a off? Few smaller bruises. <sighs> who didn't I piss off? Oh, probably don't want to know, do I? Look, I don't ask, uh, well, I ask the questions, but uh, no judgments here in this place. Most people know to uh, keep well away of my bakery. Yes, well, it's fortunate that my assailant decided to drop me. Drop you? Oh, that's a new uh, one. Yes from a uh, rather good height. Okay. Well, uh, some of the muggers are getting a little bit uh, crazier lately, it seems. Do I uh, do I get to know, you know the name of the town. man that's... Yeah, altogether no a little bit too well. Anymore. But, uh... And Barry just starts laughing as well. If you ask me, I think too many people are afraid, and that's the problem. But, uh, do I get to know Not the name the of the right man people. that just landed in my dumpster? Oh, yes, uh, sorry, manners. I'm, uh, Dr. Jonathan Crane. Uh, and he extends a hand to you. Um, Barry shakes it. Uh, I think she puts puts the the finishing touches on uh, a bandage and uh, step like wheels wheels back. Uh, Miriam Ripley. Friends call me Miri. So uh, you are the proprietor of this establishment. Yeah, this is my place. <laughs> call it the Bad Batch. Good baker can't make them look good though. So I'm funny. <laughs> uh, he laughs and then, oof, oof. Uh, excuse me. Yikes. So, Dr. Crane. That's probably your first mistake, yes. being a doctor and dressed up like that, wandering around this late at night. Yeah, well, I, it's necessary for my research. I'm a psychologist. Oh, I bet uh, <laughs> uh, you see no end of patience here. No end. No end. Worked at Arkham for many years. Yikes. Not a good yes. place. Well, depends on how you look at it. Not a good place if you're there. A good place if the people who are there are away from you. Oh, if only that were true. There, there's a very obvious look of disdain that's crossing over Miri's face. She closes the first day kit rather abruptly and wheels it back to uh, the corner of the kitchen where she's she puts it away. Are we encountering a conflict? I think we are. Okay. So do we do so, we both roll? We are both learning this game at the same time. Yes. Um I don't know. What are the rules? What do the rules say? Hey, what I didn't get dice. What say about conflict? <laughs> for this. Oh. Well, I'm using gonna, a dice roller myself because right. I, I think I'm going to I'm going to bring up a, dice. a dice roller on the side here. They are awarded once per turn, but we're sort of fudging the turns type of thing because we're both choosing to be active players all the time. We can invoke it at any time, so I say we can roll them whenever we want to. Um, how many conflict dice do you get? Um, you get three. Uh, okay. Amazing. And is it the person who... So do we both roll? Is it the person so who I'll, initiates so, the conflict or is it the person so who you tell has me, come you into think, conflict? You think... I, I, and I think from my understanding of you calling for the conflict that Miri has come into conflict um, with what... I, yeah, I mean, I think Crane, Crane has said. unintentionally said, said something, said the wrong thing. Uh, okay, in has... that case, I would actually roll this. Okay, cool. 
Um, so I, if we, if I succeed, I believe we come out of conflict or we can figure out a way to resolve it. If we fail, then we're still in conflict. Then we're, we're further, okay, we're further into it. So cool. for the, for right. the sake see, of guess. our viewers, um, five and a six is a success. Anything lower than that is a fail. We roll a number of dice. Uh, and if the number of successes outweighs the number of failures, you succeed. It's kind of it's kind of got a very similar Blades in the Dark feel in that way, except there are no mixed successes. So I'm gonna... Oh, we got one six already. One four and one five. So that's two successes to one failure, which means Miri is not going to start shouting at John. <laughs> uh, right off the bat. Um, I think... Okay. Uh, I feel like um, the expression was very obvious on her face, and I, I she she has a hard time hiding how she's feeling. Uh, so she just puts it away and she goes, "Sorry." Uh, I mean, like most people, I know, I I, I know someone that's uh, well been through that system. Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to come off as sensitive. Uh, the system is difficult. I say this as someone who's worked on the inside of it for many years. Ooh, if I can ask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably no one of note. I mean, there's what criminals in the city are a dime a dozen and well she was my sister before she decided not to be really was and decided not to be so she is still out there but I take it you're not on speaking to her oh, yeah are you psychoanalyzing me? Am I going to have to pay for this? Because I warn you, my deductible is shit. This one's free. I'm interested in people. You'll have to excuse me. I don't mean to pry. I just... Well, you know. Everything that goes on up there is so fascinating. And it's different for everyone. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Personally, I think, though, if um, you know, everyone could just get over themselves, maybe people would actually start fixing this city, but I don't think that's going to happen. A lot of people would need a lot of therapy for that to happen, I guess. <laughs> and, well, there are some who would say there are quicker ways to fix things quicker ways. <laughs> Alright, Dr. Well, we're psychoanalyzing each other. Um, and she's gonna pull out from, like, the bottom of, like, a kitchen drawer uh, a bottle of vodka and two glasses. <laughs> and she just sort of, like, gives him a look like, yeah, you want some? Because I'm doing this. And she is unscrewing. Doctor say I shouldn't have this, but who cares? Well, I'm a doctor, and it's fine with me. All and right. He uh, he indicates the, a glass in a may I kind of. Yeah, kind I of think you're going to get a bonus dice for when we do this uh, alignment roll at the end of this meeting for that. Miri, Miri thought that was cool. Okay. So just cool. Yeah, you can mark that. Um, so yeah, she slides. Uh, they're definitely not like shot glasses, but she just pours a little bit. I mean, bit I feel like it's something that you would have in the bakery. It's like a, oh, you yeah. know, they're like little measuring cups or something. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, like, like a, like a tiny, like a cupcake tin. I don't a know. cupcake tin is... <laughs> I mean, like a, it's like, like a, a single serving cup. I'm just gonna drink it. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I, love I like the, the I idea love the of, of tiny it just measuring being, cups. yeah, like, right, like a small measuring cup. Yeah, yeah, I think she, she pulls out two of those and slides one down. Sorry, I couldn't okay. bring out the fine china. I didn't realize I'd be having guests. You won't have any complaints from me. Uh, I was literally lying in an alley uh, about ten minutes ago, so... Well, like I said, I see all sorts, and uh, most people know that this is a safe space to come to if people are in trouble. Within reason. Well, then uh, I'll drink to that. Yeah, she cheers, and she's watching him pretty closely. You didn't say exactly what kind of trouble you were in, just that somebody threw you off of a roof. Why would somebody want to throw you off of a roof? There are certain people in this town who don't much like my research. Government types? Rough. Mm. More independent types. Yeah, Mary is not stupid. <laughs> Um, Miri's gonna take a sip of this vodka and like ease into her, her wheelchair just a little bit. And there's no there's no role for inside checks in this one. <laughs> but I mean, do we want to call this a conflict? Because I think at so. At this point, the conflict is Crane is trying to be cagey. Uh, uh and yeah, and and that's that's creating friction. Right? Yeah. I think I agree okay. with that. I think this one you have to roll. All right. So I am going to roll. So it's just the it's the same conflict die. Uh, it's three of them. Or dice. It's three, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to roll 3d6. Uh, and... Is is success is success continuing to obfuscate or opening up? I we mean, you know we can mutually decide on that. Did you succeed or uh, fail? I, I mean, okay, so we have one success here. I feel like failure is Miri putting the glass down independent parties. I feel like she's not going to she 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 knows he's lying about something. <laughs> okay. Um So, given that, do do we think that success means he he's spilling the beans or will continue to to obfuscate? Oh, sorry. Did you say you succeeded or failed? I have one success and two non-successes. I don't know. I don't know how. Oh, that so that means out. that overall. So, so exist. the roll. If you rolled, um, if you rolled more dice that succeeded than failed, then the roll itself succeeds. If you rolled two dice that failed and one that ah. succeeded, you failed. Okay. Okay. So this is more of a failure then, because failures outweigh yeah. successes. I, th I think a success state would him being able to, like, successfully reel that back uh, yeah. and continue to be cagey, and a failure state is him having to uh, spill the beans because he done got caught. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I think uh, Crane kind of, like, you know, smooths back his his hair flop. <sighs> oh. I can see you're an intelligent one. Uh, clearly, I didn't get dropped from a fire escape by a common mug. I've had a rather interesting evening tangling with uh, a 
pointy-eared vigilante. So on a scale from one to ten, how fast should I wheel myself back over to my shotgun? This doesn't have to leave this room, don't you think, uh, Miss Ripley? Well, depending on uh, if you're going to kill me or not, then uh, you don't have to leave this room at all. But if you're not here to hurt me, then sure. It doesn't have to leave this room. I just like to be upfront with, uh, you know, since the criminals in the city have gotten a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for, eccentric? I've had to step up my own security. Understandable. I, Miss Ripley, am not a criminal. Okay. Yes, I may operate outside the bounds of the law as written, but when you get down to it, what is the law but a series of restrictions so that certain people can stay in power, certain people can remain out of it? Hmm? Not all laws are just. If I am a criminal, it is only because I have broken laws that hold people back. Hold people back from doing things that are, in my case, scientifically important. That could either be a great philosophical question, or you're justifying something. And I don't know you well enough to know which one that is. Then, perhaps you should give me the benefit of the doubt, and we can get to know each other a little better. All right, well, I haven't uh, wheeled myself screaming out the door, have I? But then again, I think no. given that state, you could probably catch me before I did anything, so it would seem like we're at an impasse. But that... <laughs> that is exactly what intrigues me, Miss Ripley. Uh, you... My inability to run? Well, yes. You see... There are a lot of people who would be... Well, uh, somewhat afraid in your position right now. And... I am not detecting a trace of fear coming from your direction. Not that I am someone to be feared, but... Well, you did just say that the Batman... The eye uh, of the beholder. You did say that the Batman uh, noticed you enough to fight you, so there might be a reason for me to be scared. There might Should be. I be scared? But are you? No. <laughs> You're gonna have to do a lot better than that. Good. Then, I think my judgment was correct here. Your judgment? You chose to fall off of the roof that landed in, near my dumpster in my alley so I would find you and bring you in here so you could run some sort of experiment? Wow, you are a criminal mastermind. <laughs> if only. I merely meant my uh, judgment of the preceding three minutes or so. Look, there's a lot in this city to uh, be scared of, but... Uh... I've seen some things, and it's really hard to scare somebody that's already dying, so, yikes. Mm. You're dying. Yes, I thought I would wear this wheelchair like a fashion accessory. I think it goes great with my hair. All right. Point taken. 
so you've decided as you are already on death's door and that is the ultimate thing in this world to be afraid of you've faced it down and you have decided that nothing else is worth fearing yeah that about sums it up I think if uh, if more people in this city could, uh, you know, just be honest about stuff that they're afraid to lose, maybe this would be a better place. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, I- This is interesting, Miss Ripley. You see, my area of specialty is fear. This, when I say I'm interested in what's going on in people's heads, in what makes them tick, this is what I'm talking about. Fear. The most base instinct. Fear motivates so much of what people do, so much of what they think, so much of what they think about themselves. It's fascinating. To me, at least. I don't know, perhaps I'm just blathering on and this is meaningless to you. Yeah, maybe you're a lightweight and that one shot really did you. (laughs) Well, I... I don't suppose, as a woman living without fear, you have some insight into this, hmm? You see people come into your shop every day, in and out. Uh, You interact with them, their concerns, their hopes, their dreams, whatever it is they're, they're dealing with. Surely they divulge to the proprietor of the local neighborhood coffee shop and bakery. (laughs) Am I going to get credit on this dissertation when you inevitably publish it? Perhaps. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, people, people like to talk to me. Of course they do. I'm the girl in the wheelchair. (laughs) People always want to talk to me. Mostly it's to tell me how sorry they are. It gets old after a while and I know people mean well and I like my clients and I like the people that come in. But you know, everyone has problems in this city but no one seems interesting in solving any of them. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I hire a lot of the, the kids in this neighborhood, try to give them something to do that keeps them away from the gangs, and uh, I think that helps. But, you know, it seems that anyone that wants to try to help in the city eventually tries to destroy it. I don't know what's in the water. It's a different thing, everyone. These people that you see, though, you you talk about... You talk about seeing them. Why do you think it is, though, that they can't act? that they are stuck in their small worldview, that they can only look at you and see, like you say, the girl in the wheelchair when you are so much more than that. What keeps them locked in those patterns? Probably a lot of things. I mean, if uh, you want my professional opinion, it's uh, lack of money. There's too many bills, not enough money. People do some crazy things to try to stay alive. 
I don't always agree with it, but I can understand it. It's tough to survive in this city. It is. And if you ask me what that is, at its core, at its root, is a fear. A fear of falling off the edge. A fear of destitution. Uh, a fear of not being able to provide. A fear of losing whatever meager scraps you're able to eke out from this town. Neri pours another drink and slides the a second glass over to Crane before taking a sip of her own. So you're telling me you got thrown off of a roof just for asking questions? I mean, my therapist asked me some of these questions all the time. I don't think they're worth uh, throwing him off the roof, although the bills, maybe, but... Uh, what is it that you do, Dr. Uh, Crane? Well, my methods can be a little extreme. I'll tell you that. Uh, he reaches into his coat that is hanging uh, draped over the back of the, the chair here um, and takes out a... Um, a little, um, uh, a little pressurized cylinder. It looks like uh, a little, oh um, uh, like uh, you know, like the thing, you, the sort of thing you'd have for like a paintball gun or like a um, like a soda stream, like one of those little CO two canisters. Uh, yeah. He takes out out something uh, that looks like that, uh, and he places it on the table. This is a formula of my own devising, which has the effect of highly stimulating for a limited period the fear centers of the human brain. And much of my research uses this as a tool in conjunction with some theatrical disguises. So, is this the part where uh, you're going to try to kill me? You keep saying that, Miss Ripley. I, I don't think I'm properly conveying myself. Uh, I have no interest in killing you. I don't know why I would. I don't know. Sounds like you were uh, in the process of divulging some evil plans about making people go nuts with fear, but maybe I'm reading into things. Like I said, I'm rather theatrical, but that description is extremely theatrical. I'm conducting research with this. Sometimes it is necessary uh, in order to obtain what I need for my research uh, to go a little outside the bounds of the law, but, well... Yeah, you drug people, right? Said, well, yes, test subject. There it is. But I'm not trying to kill anyone, Miss Ripley. I'm investigating. I believe that a person in the grips of fear shows you who they are at their core. But like I said, everyone is different. So what's the commonality? I don't know yet. That's what I'm trying to find out. I think this is research that you should be sympathetic to. Ultimately, this will improve this city. So your subjects, when you're finished with them, do they get better? Or are they just afraid? And 
comments on the subject. Like I said, people are very different. Have you ever tested it on yourself? Um, hmm. I think this is another, have we reached another conflict? Uh, I think, again, have. this is a point where where Crane has to have a decision point about whether to, uh, whether to divulge or stay coy. Does that sound good? Do yeah. You like that? Yeah, it does. Okay. Should I should I roll for it or you? Um, I think it's you. I think it's on Crane's side, so I'm gonna roll this. Yeah. All failures. Yikes. Uh, okay. So here's <laughs> the question. Um, or do we? Do we just want to roll with this unilaterally? Do we think that uh, that Crane has, in fact, tested the fear gas on himself? I think yes. I think so too. There's there's no question, right? Yeah. Like, I have to feel like that's part of his kind of you know tragic descent, Probably. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, so Crane leans in. Well, certainly, Miss Ripley. How could I be a proper researcher of fear without experiencing it for myself? I certainly wouldn't inflict anything on anyone else that I wouldn't myself experience. Well, that's self uh, considerate of you. I Mary's like fixing him with like I this look that's like I just don't know if I should be trying to leave or if I should keep him talking and try to dial nine one one under the table. Um, yeah, she hasn't decided. I think Mm. And I think given that, that might be where we're wrapping this up. So I think... Yeah. Uh, I think Crane uh, brings the second drink, uh, puts it back on uh, on the table, and uh, takes the, the canister and just sort of pushes it a little forward in Miri's direction I should probably be going I've taken up enough of your time I'll leave this with you like I said I've experienced it myself and it told me a lot of things about who I was you say and you appear to be a woman without fear so Perhaps you'll gain a little knowledge by experiencing it yourself for a change. I gotta be honest. I've taken a lot of drugs in my life. No one's just offered me one without some sort of price. The price is... Whether you want to truly know yourself or not, it's Ripley. Simple as that. I can't decide if you're insane or maybe brilliant. I'll take that as a compliment. I should be going. He points to the All right. canister. Think about it. No obligation, and first one's free. <laughs> well, try not to get thrown off of any more roofs, Dr. Crane. <sighs> I shall endeavor my level best. 
Nice. And uh, as he as he opens the door, he sort of looks up towards the sky. <laughs> and he is still out there. Well, you know where I am if you want to drop in again and uh, use the front door next time. Thank you, Miss Ripley. Good night. And Whew. the door shuts with a little tinkle of the bell, and Scarecrow walks off into the night. So from here, we roll to see if our alignment goes up or down. Mm hmm. Um, I gave you a bonus dice. Uh, did you want to give me any? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I want at least one for, uh, Crane is, was just extremely impressed at Miri's level-headedness throughout that whole thing, and that, that's kind of the main thing thus far that intrigues him about Miri Ripley. Yeah. Is that, that level-headed fearlessness. So... Yeah, uh, I'm. I would definitely give a bonus for that. Cool. So then we're each rolling five because you roll the number of boxes you have plus any bonus. This is gonna be fun. All right. Uh, and I have a question for you, David. Do you want to hold yeah. all mention of what our alignment is until the end? I don't know. Uh, what is more fun? What's more dramatic? Yeah, I don't know. Because uh, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> chat. If you have an opinion, we're listening. Answers. I'm gonna roll, but I won't say anything right now. Okay, I I feel like we should just say what it is, and then okay, uh, and then continue on. Do you disagree? Uh, yeah, I think we should just do it. Interesting. Okay. You succeeded. Well, on Mary's end. Hmm. Uh. Huh. Okay. So success is successes outweigh failures, right? Yes. Uh. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So Crane's side is not a success. Interesting. So Crane, Crane is, I think, not. Uh, yeah, for Crane, you're you're not a true believer. Yeah. All right. This is right. this is already shaping up to be very wacky. <laughs> cool. Uh, all right. So we have two more, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what's the and second encounter look like? I set the first one, right? So I think it's your yeah. turn to set. Let me see. So where where do Jonathan Crane and Mary Ripley encounter each other for a second time? I have an interesting thought. Or we could save it for another encounter. But... Has Jonathan engaged in any kind of, you know, hostile takeover of an event to try to, like, showcase fear to the populace or anything like that? Because I'm thinking Miri could be at some sort of event or party uh, that she's been invited to before it, like inevit that. it inevitably gets very, it gets Gothamized by a villain. <laughs> I like that. Do we want to save that for a final scene? Yes, I think we should. Okay. Okay. Let me let me come up with a middle ground. <laughs> so yeah. What, um, so right. now we know what our third encounter is. Um, maybe this yeah. one is and a little bit another, more. And then another another rules clarification here. Um, failures and successes. Do I untick the box that I had checked? Yes. Failure. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So what's what's a what's a this good so what's a good middle ground? Middle ground. I could suggest maybe her I mean, come okay, leaving the so, hospital. Um, because hmm. she goes there for appointments. Um, or even while she's still in the hospital. Um. I mean, getting okay. treatment it, or anything like it that. Be, it would be interesting if Miri came upon Crane potentially doing something nefarious. Uh, yeah, as one does in Gotham, yeah. Right, right, but not in like a big flashy way. We'll save that for the end. Well, she hasn't, I'll, t- I'll hit you with this, she hasn't seen him in the Scarecrow getup. We could either save that one for the end, or this could be the first time she sees that. Yeah. So I kind of like saving that one for the end. Uh, <laughs> ha- <laughs> Taking all my ideas and shoving them to the end. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We No, we can we can do that if you want. No, no, no. Like I was that. making a joke. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. Um, I think then either uh, a mundane thing is just like, I'm just thinking of just what is Miri's day to day? Um, it's definitely taking care yeah. of... I mean, I, li- uh, I like the idea that she would... I like the idea um, that she would be maybe uh, having some downtime at the hospital in, like, the midst of a treatment. Um, yeah. Either before, after, when she's leaving, or something, something to that effect. And, you know, she, like comes upon Crane while she's like going down to the He's the vending machine. Stealing some something. supplies. <laughs> I love that actually. I love I love the the kind of low stakes of that. Yeah, he's just like stealing supplies from the hospital. Okay. Uh so That's very good. Yeah, to, I think uh, Do you want to start describing the scene? Yeah, I think in this case then um Miri uh, has been uh, in in the hospital uh, visiting her specialists, um, getting the usual wonderful optimistic prognosis that she is used to getting. Uh, and then I think this time she's using uh, two, I forget what they are. They're not crutches, but they, or maybe they are crutches. They're just the ones that like you can slot into your arms and use rather yeah, than like the crutches like that you, yeah, the, they're more like braces. Uh, cause she can, she can utilize both that and a wheelchair, but sometimes she gets stubborn and doesn't really want to be in the wheelchair, even though the doctors are now trying to get her to use one of those, um, wheelchairs that are not manual, but have like mobility aids. And she has just been like, no, no, thank you. Um, and they are not happy with her. Uh, so I think she's, uh, heading out. Uh, she's, she's got a new round of meds, uh, in her purse. And I think she's leaving, um, what would be what would be the name of the room? She's not quite in the waiting room, but she's sleeping diagno- a diagnostic room, something like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. She, she's she's walking down a, a hospital hallway. Um, it's stark white. Um, she's uh, she's still got she's still rocking the fifties look. I do think this time she's wearing a blouse and like a pink skirt. Um, she's still she's still determined to wear the high heels, even though they are really affecting her balance it's just that she does not she just doesn't she just doesn't want to be done with him yet she's no she's not so good stubborn. so she's 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 uh she's moving pretty slowly so she doesn't completely collapse because she didn't bring her wheelchair to this appointment she wanted to walk she's not too far from the hospital yeah. so she walked here um so she's clacking her way down the hallway and tell me what Jonathan is doing that they just sort of have the it's always sunny in Philadelphia moment where they're staring at each other from across <laughs> um I I think uh I think Mary passes like a um a a like a, a pharmacy like a storage area for for drugs on this floor um, probably like a little ways back from the nurses' station, um, and you uh, you see a uh, a gangly, long and thin limbed figure uh, emerge from the from the door of uh, um, of the the pharmacy storage uh, with um, 
I don't know. He's probably got like a backpack. Right? Just yeah. just like something. Yes. He, he's got he's definitely he's wearing a white coat and scrubs. Uh and he has like a uh he he has a uh you know, a name badge uh clipped to his clipped to his white coat. Uh and I think he's sort of specifically in disguise as like a a doctor leaving call, right? Uh, a doctor who's been on call and is, is yeah. about to go home. Um, yeah, I think so. she almost walks past him and then stops, and then awkwardly tries to go backwards before that's too difficult, and she has to turn herself around. Yeah, um, and uh, Crane is is sort of looking down into the side, like you know, I have to. Uh, I'm just gonna sort of breeze by this and says, oh, sorry, excuse oh <laughs> Miss Mary Ripley Wow, oh, you remembered my name Yes So what's a doctor doing in a place like this? In the hospital, you mean? That was a joke. You can laugh. Uh, yes, of course. Um, well, you know, collecting this and that, some things. Causing terror on the unsuspecting patients, the usual. You say that like it's a bad thing. No. <laughs> uh, I say that like it's the obvious thing, isn't it? Terror is a valuable medicine, Miss Ripley. I thought I'd made this clear at our last encounter. You did, and you were nice enough to leave me with a souvenir that still sits in the back of my closet, unopened. Oh, shame. You should I'm try I'm just it. waiting for the right time, you know? It's like champagne. It has to feel right. It's fair enough, but unlike champagne, I will tell you, it doesn't age well. Hmm. Fear tends to get worse the longer you keep it inside. You see? You understand. Uh, let's go for a walk. Sure, I'm equipped for that. Let's do that. Uh, <laughs> she falls into step uh, alongside him. Um, and uh, I think there is a... I think there's a park across from the hospital. Um, and... I love that. Crane is going to make a note for that later. <laughs> Crane is going to make just a bit of a show of uh, helping, being a doctor, helping you as a patient out of the out of the hospital and uh, and across conflict. The street, or is going immediate, to immediate immediate conflict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. Miri's all fun in games right now because she doesn't know where she stands, but do not treat her like an invalid. I need to roll for that for sure. Yeah, so Crane is going to start sort of like reaching sort of uh, down and around with a... Uh, may I? Spectacular failure of all ones. <laughs> I think this fail condition is is it is like she does a remarkable job of balancing on one of the crutches briefly while she like raises her hand pointing like the flat end of the crutch at him. Thank like, you so much. If you try to support me, I will stab you with this very 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 blunt brace. Oh, okay. I apologize, Miss Ripley. 
There are a lot of people watching, and I would rather leave here without incident. I thought perhaps that would arouse the least suspicion. Why don't you just open the door for me like a gentleman? Very well. Um, and, uh, Crane will, uh, <laughs> I think walk up to the hospital's automatic doors, uh, and <laughs> just, like, step- <laughs> That's even better! You know, like, st- like, just step onto the mat that activates the automatic doors, and they go open, and he just, like, with a flourish, just- yeah, Mir- okay. yeah. I admittedly I walked into that one. All right, and she <laughs> she uh, she uh, is awkwardly balancing on the on the crutches on her way out. And now you're walking out and through it. And if we both do that without raising too much of a ruckus, uh, Crane says, sort of looking back over his shoulder as they sort of head down the the sidewalk around like the the front. Uh, like, uh, you know, the driveway strip along the side of the hospital where you can pull up to the emergency room or what have you, right? Uh, sort of heading down and around. <sighs> Good. So, Doctor, to what to do we owe the pleasure of your company, or rather the intrusion of yourself at the hospital. Uh, Like I said, uh, he holds, uh, he sort of indicates the backpack over his shoulder. I needed some supplies for my work. I don't work there. I imagine it's pretty difficult to get regular medical supplies when you're being a vigilante psychologist. It is. It is. I was much better set up back at Arkham, but they did not have the will to do the work to its utmost. Didn't like you torturing the patients? Torturing? Come on. You weren't even there. You don't know if they were tortured or not. Anyway, a little bit of torture is good for the soul. Wow. Why don't you see that in fortune cookies more often? I can't imagine. Makes perfect sense to me. You're no fun. You you don't laugh at any of my jokes. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. You're very witty. Don't get me wrong. It's just... Well... I feel like I'm trying to have a much more serious discussion than you are a lot of the time, Miss Ripley. You're right. I'm sorry. I'll be serious now. I'm not going to be charged for this session, am I? Last time you said that was a freebie. That was the last joke. Now I'm done. Okay, that was a good one. I liked it. So, supplies. Starting a new, uh... New test, Doctor? Always testing, Miss Ripley, always testing. What kind of answers are you looking for this time? (sighs) The same ones as usual. I promise you, uh, and I, I think this conversation we we've reached like the the edge of the park and we're starting to sort of move yeah. under the the trees right i promise you at the end of the day i'm trying to help you know i actually do believe that is what you mean which is why i didn't call the cops All right, last time good. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, The GCPD and I don't have the most cordial relationship. Uh, Miri almost speaks and then stops herself because she did promise that was the last joke she would tell while they were talking. So she just clears her throat instead. And uh, so 
your intention isn't to just drive everyone insane with fear. There must be something that you want out of it. Well, of course not. What would be the point of that? You are... Mm. I feel, Miss Ripley, that you are on the cusp of understanding this. You're not quite there. But I think you're close. So help me understand. All right. I believe, as I said previously, that people are motivated by fear. You can understand what motivates a person, you can shape their behavior. If you can shape their behavior, you can affect change. If you can affect change, you can improve things. Like, for example, this, uh, and he gestures around at Gotham uh, largely. Um, I think we are in... Uh, uh, hmm. I, I, I don't want to... I'm trying to figure out how hard to hit this, like how run down is the park. But oh yeah, it's just like the park is probably outside of a hospital. It's probably not great to begin with, but yeah, like I think it. Uh, I think the park is uh, clearly it was very nice when it was built. It has sort of the bones of like. Uh, a, a very old style like fancy park uh, where you know a hundred years ago you could see uh, uh, fancy couples promenading uh, and uh, you know taking the air and you know very like beautiful stone gates and, and benches uh, and now, as Crane gestures around, the stone is cracked and overgrown, uh, and the the paths are uh, perhaps not the best maintained. Um, I think there are probably some people camping out in this park, some people yeah. who, have, who have been displaced, uh, who are uh, are sort of like uh, off to the off to the side. This city, it can be changed. You seemed interested in that when we talked before. That's what I'm interested in, ultimately. Understanding people so that I can help improve things in my own small way. I've heard the sales pitch for changing the city before. And, uh, you know, some people fell for it. It didn't amount to much. Who was giving the pitch, hmm? <laughs> Politicians? They're yeah. always talking about it. And you know as well as I do that they don't do a damn thing. Or you can say that they try, again. They end up worse off. Well, my sister's currently paying the price for being a sucker. So you'll excuse me if I have a few doubts. Fair enough. There is a sense in which I am. If you will permit me a bit of self-aggrandizing, a bit of a Moses, I might be doing the work, but I may not live to see the promised land. <laughs> All right. So you really want to help this city. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, the so-called heroes of the city don't like it too much. You can understand why that makes me doubt exactly what you're trying to sell me. Just a little bit. Heroes. <laughs> Who? The Batman? A thug with wings. Or cape. It's hard to tell. I would have thought you would have admired him. Isn't, uh... He's got a whole lot of people scared. 
He just took the first step. He is not willing to do what it actually takes. He swoops in. He scares the criminal element, perhaps. He scares certain people who are in positions of power. But his ability to do that is limited, you understand. He's got the right idea, but, well, he's just not willing to go far enough. And what is far enough, Doctor? What is it that you actually want out of all of this? A city without any fear? Or a city so afraid they do everything you tell them? on how my experiments shake out. Whatever is the best result, whatever gets us to the best outcome, that's what we go with. That's science. Simple as that. You know, you're going uh, way far out of your way to impress the woman that owns a bakery down on 9th. I'm not a doctor. I'm certainly not Batman. <laughs> and, uh, you really want me to believe in what you're saying. If it makes you feel any better, Miss Ripley, consider this an experiment. Can I win you to my point of view? That's Are a valuable you scared piece of you behavioral won't? analysis. Hmm. Maybe I am. Because Ooh. if I can't even convince one random citizen, well, what chance do I of convincing anyone? So you're scared of being proven wrong? Or of being the only one to see the truth? How am I doing so far, Doctor? Very good. Very, very good. Those are the same thing as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, it can be. I know a lot of people that would benefit from that kind of treatment. Not going to lie. I don't have to necessarily enjoy it or like it, but... I think if more people could sit in a room and see what it is they really were scared of, well, maybe they'd do everything in their power to make sure they would never have to be trapped in that room with that fear again. Yes. Now you're getting. I think at this point, you know, they, they've walked the circuit of the park and, and Mary is starting to, to turn down and is gesturing that she goes like this direction, essentially. And she stops and turns around and says, uh, you know, I lied to you before. Did you? I'm afraid all the time. It's just that you have to choose to not let it win. Well, Miss Ripley, I imagine fish have no word for water. <laughs> that almost sounded like a joke. See? I almost have a sense of humor. Wow. Maybe we're starting to have an effect on each other. Hmm. Perhaps. Only time will tell. I... hope I shall run into you again, Miss Ripley. Something tells me, Doctor, that a man of your abilities... You're just going to make sure that happens. Well, 
perhaps next time you will have opened my gift. Think about it. Maybe I'll go home and I'll do just that. And I wonder if that's where we end that second scene. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's for sure the cut. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> this is intense. R- retroactive bonus dice. Uh, I feel like we're not good at calling yeah. them in the moment. But are there? Yeah, any that we to- throw I was getting. In? I'm too involved. I know, right? Um, I think. I definitely do want to give uh, Crane one just for being honest because it definitely sounded like he was talking to her. And she's genuinely like miffed that this doctor is like hell bent on getting her to believe in this cause. It in a strange way feels pathetic and sincere. And she doesn't, she, she hasn't seen him in action yet. So she's not sure if maybe she had it wrong before and maybe. He's just on to something groundbreaking and everyone else is just freaking out about it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, and then I think... I think... Um, very specifically... I don't know if this is two bonus dice or if that's too much. Um, but the two things I think that Miri said Ooh. that... Uh, that got Crane the most interested in in her point of view were about uh, um, about people needing to be locked in a room with their fears Uh, and uh, and also the, the lie that she that she is afraid all the time I'll take that. So I'm rolling six now, I think. I, I Yeah, I think that those, those feel like two separate things to me. So I'm going to say two for that. Okay, yeah. so I'm rolling five, you're rolling yeah. six, right? Okay. Yes. All right. Two rolls. Two rolls. Mm-hmm. This is interesting. I've tied. <laughs> Ooh, huh. Well, th- this is the peril of two, uh, of adding two, I guess. Roll um, yours, and then I, I think we should have a question about it. Yeah. What's the what's the re-roll rule? There's a re-roll on the sheet here. What is so this? So re-roll what does this mean? is... This re-roll is a dice you can award if somebody has said something in direct conflict um, and you can re-roll specifically uh, acting out things that put their character at a disadvantage in the scene so you get them for uh, actions and words uh, involving uh, new and existing traits that put your character out or on the back foot Um, so it's Okay, that's interesting. I'm trying to understand this as we play. You can get only one reroll for each attraction or bonus die the active player rolled that had a failing result. So you can give me a dice to reroll, or I can give you a dice to reroll. Okay, but in order to do that, uh, we have to have we we have to be taking some sort of disadvantage in the next scene going forward, right? Like we we add some sort of I think disadvantage that's... trait. Well, <laughs> if we go with what we talked about earlier, there's quite a disadvantage happening there. Okay. Um, well, so I'm sitting on two successes and uh, out of five, so I am I am okay. in a total failure state. Um, Interesting. I, is, is there anything? I've is there tied. Any written down about ties. <sighs> no. Why don't we just decide something here? Okay, let's. Why don't? How about this? Uh, if it's a tie, let's go with whatever I end up rolling. So let's come up with a. I want to. I want to re-roll one. 
And okay. And then we'll see if that ends up in a uh, in a failure state or a success. Interesting. And that will then also be your state for for this encounter. I love it. That makes sense. Does that work? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So, what is our what is our disadvantage trait for Crane that we're going to add here? Disadvantage. Mm. I would say like I'm trying to think of like bad traits, but he's a villain, so it's <laughs> complicated. I mean, persistent. <sighs> like the he's literally been persistent in trying to He's met Mary once, and now he's like, "I got to convince this one girl. I got to do that now." Yeah. Apparently, well, that's we, that's his thing. The first trait that we came up for him was obsessive. That's so. true. Um, um, mm. Well, we already know he's violent. Yeah, I mean, I do like persistent uh, or or determined. Like he like determined. I like good. the idea that in the next scene he will actively scrap what he's doing in order to attempt to bring Miri over to his side. I love it. I'm I'm really enjoying okay. that it seems like this failure compatibility state is turning into a hunt Miri down state. Yeah, okay, cool. So uh so yeah, it feels let's very add, Gotham Rogue. Okay, so so that means I'm not checking another box. Well, I'm going to re-roll, and then we'll see, right? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. go for it. I thought you were into the... I, I don't actually know. This okay, so I re-roll just one, correct? Yeah. Oh, no, that took it away. Hmm? Failure. God... <laughs> I really like that the failure is so high in this game. That's just true, even though we're modifying it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to mark another one. This is this is interesting. Do I need a disadvantage trait as well? No, I don't think so, because if the rule is... Interesting. Yeah. Well, we're not really sticking to the active player versus guide so much, so we've been both active and just sort of being our own guides as needed. Do you want one? <laughs> well, she's been I mean, do you uh, amiable. Okay, I think I think if you take one, then you re-roll one on your end. Oh, that's true. Oh, I already tied, so I was just following you had said that if you had failed, I would just reflect that failure because I had fully tied. Right, but I'm saying if you then if you then also if you take I feel like if you take the That's true. Uh yeah, if you take the actually the disadvantage trait, then I'll you do get it. To re-roll. Let me re-roll something. Okay. Uh still a failure. This okay. is turning interesting. I actually think here's the disadvantage. She's understanding, but it's percolating into something very different in her mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it is with him, and I think she's been amiable right now, but it could turn pretty fast. She's intrigued yeah. now, but she might start to become annoyed soon. Okay. Well, uh... this is the Goliath. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, we are we are rapidly barreling towards a uh, an extremely chaotic outcome here. Okay, cool. So uh, for me on on my board, I have zero boxes, and I have two. You have two. Okay. Well, wait. Oh, because you you gained one last time. Okay, so you're you're at two. I did. I'm at zero. This is interesting. Cool. Let's go into our third and final scene. <sighs> okay. Uh, so I was picturing see, maybe... Yeah, what What do you have here? Yeah. Um, 
And feel free to change it because technically I was supposed to do the second one, but then we were like, let's change that one to the third one. Um, some sort of like gala event of some kind. I don't know if Miri is a guest or if she is uh, catering to get extra money. Um, catering is good. I like catering. I like that too, because I think, you know, we could, it's definitely something for the Wayne Foundation, let's be real. Who else throws galas yeah. in Gotham? Yeah, so I think she's catering. She's got, um, it's not her com- It's not her bakery. That's not what they do. I think she's just part of the staff that she does like at night sometimes when she needs to pick up some extra money because uh, medication ain't cheap. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, where is this? I feel like it's not too large of a gathering, but maybe it's like a, like a fancy no. dinner. Yeah, or, that makes sense. Well, if it, if it was at a restaurant, then well, uh, okay, maybe it's at a restaurant and you and um, Miri is doing. It could like, be an event space. Yeah. Okay, so we're we're at some sort of you know like whatever. I don't know. I don't even know what a, a high price for a, a plate is at a charity dinner. No clue. It could be a lot. <laughs> it could, it could yeah. be anywhere from like obscene to completely just obliterate these people off the face of the earth. But yeah, it's, right. it's Gotham. We might be on the obliterate them side of things. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So you know, it's like a it's like a, a hundred thousand dollars a plate dinner or something. Cr- or, you know, something wild like that. Um, for yeah. The, so for the foundation. I think Miri has, she's in her wheelchair again because for something like this, she needs to not be balancing both herself and, you know, trays and directing people. Um, and I think she has a, a tank, like an oxygen tank hooked up on the back of it. Um, and it does have like a little respirator that she can use when she needs to, to when she's overexerting herself. Perfect. But I don't know what's inside of it. Interesting. So, you know, we have, I think, the, uh, we, we have, you know, the string quartet uh, playing in the corner. Uh, we we have, you know, these, these white tablecloth tables with these beautiful floral centerpieces uh, and uh, a bunch of uh, the, the, Hoi polloi of Gotham City, rubbing elbows uh, at dinner, clinking glasses. Uh, the, the wine is flowing freely. Um, there's probably a uh, there's probably like a podium uh, towards the towards the front of the space, um, and uh, I think. Uh, hmm. What? What is the? What is? What is Scarecrow's opening move here? Do we think? <laughs> um. Is it? Is he, it just to cut like, the lights? I was gonna say cut the lights, and I would. I would have hoped he'd rig that fire suppression system to release something else. Yeah. Okay. So there's just a big chunk. Uh, as the the space goes dark, um, and then a uh, uh, I think there's just like there's there's like a reading light on the podium, um, and we hear uh, the uh, you know as people start to uh, sort of mutter. Uh, mutter and grumble uh, in the in the darkness. Uh, we hear the hiss of the uh, of the the fire suppression system activating, and uh, something is filling the room. And uh, a figure steps up to the podium. A thin 
limbed, gangly, tall figure and then takes the reading light and flips it up so that their face uh, is illuminated from below. But of course, it is not a human face. It is a burlap mask with a crude facsimile of a human face stitched into it. Um, and this person leans forward into the microphone uh, and says, Ladies and gentlemen of Gotham, you all came here tonight hoping to support good work of the Wayne Foundation. And I am very pleased to tell you that in addition to those contributions, you will also be supporting some very critical scientific work with your own personages. Please, sit back, breathe deep, and let's go on a little journey, shall we? How does Mary react to this? Mary instantly tries to usher the rest of the catering staff and back to the kitchens in very protective mode. Um, they aren't her employees, but this is what she does first. Um, and, uh, she, she's not even paying attention to him. Like she knows full well what's going on here, but, um, she tries, she tries to get them back. Some of these are younger people that are younger than her. So she's, she's gone into protective sister mode and is getting them Mm -hmm. hopefully away from whatever is about to happen. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think if you're going into the kitchen, like, uh, Scarecrow probably has people on, in on this job who are, excuse me, who are, uh, coming in to seal off the exits, so there's probably, uh, a couple of, uh, goons in the kitchen, um, uh, we, we've seen these fellows, uh, on, uh, on stream before, uh, oh boy. we know that they... Yeah, we know that they wear gas masks and uh, burlap hoods um, and tend to be armed either with uh, conventional uh, firearms or, in some cases, with uh, gas, beer gas uh, canisters. So I think they, they try to get into that kitchen, but it's clearly like, do they either like get through the doors and I'm seeing like, like maybe think, they do, but it's surrounded. Yeah, I think you, you sort of, sh- yeah, you sort of, sh- uh, you sort of shepherd, ev- shepherd everybody through, through the doors of the kitchen uh, as two of these guys step through the, uh, the sort of exit door to, uh, you know, like the, like the kitchen entrance uh, yeah. to the okay. area. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sorry, and she, she folks. turns around to. Ain't nobody going nowhere. And and she she turns to the to the rest of the staff. This one she's like, "Don't worry, we're gonna get out of here. You know they're gonna do what they what they always do, but they're gonna ignore us because what do we have to give them? Just stay calm and nobody do anything stupid." Um. That doesn't apply to her. <laughs> but, <laughs> Thank- yeah, I think what the, the guy says, thanks, ma'am. Appreciate it. That's uh, exactly what you should be doing. I didn't say it for you. Um, she like snaps over at them. She can't actually do anything to them, but she's just given the if looks could kill stare. Um, I don't know how much of that is translating given the lights have mostly gone out. Um, and she... Uh, is sort of going to usher them like behind the, the table. I'm imagining there was like maybe a buffet style um, like spread that sort of went around the perimeter of, of the main event room or hall. Um, and she 
it's like okay get 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 under her get under here she can't fit under there with a the chair but she can get everybody else under there um and her priority yeah. is very clearly she doesn't seem to be treating this uh she's only focusing on the staff she doesn't seem to be offering the same sort of consolation to any of the rest of the guests yeah i i think uh, at this point, only the staff are are in here. The rest of the guests, I think you can you start to hear screaming outside, uh, and people are screaming. Like if you catch snatches of it, it's it's wild stuff. People are screaming about things that couldn't possibly be there. Like uh, you know, you you hear uh some some man screaming about like spiders there's thousands of spiders and then you you hear somebody else say that they're drowning um and uh just like uh all these and nobody nobody seems to be saying that the same thing is happening as you hear them shouting right um and I think the the gas is starting to seep under the uh, under the kitchen door. Oh boy! Should I make a conflict roll here to see what happens with that gas? Uh, yeah. Depending on what I get here, I'm gonna double down on something. Okay, cool. To delete delete all of these other dice that I rolled. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here's what happens. Was not expecting that. Um, I think uh, the gas starts to seep under there, and uh, Miri actually unclips the respirator that she has and puts it on over her mouth and just starts breathing in. And uh, she closes her eyes briefly, takes a big, deep inhale, and then removes the um, the respirator. And her eyes are dilated like crazy at this moment. I rolled a six. Uh, okay. So what? So, so this determined what was in my oxygen tank. It's not oxygen. <laughs> it's not oxygen. It's not oxygen. Um, and. Uh, Mary's a little high. Um, this is interesting. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna take a little a little liberty here, um, and I also want to hear feedback from you if you think this is this is appropriate. So what's going on is that Mary is seeing like almost superimposed on the peripheral of her of her vision these like almost photo negative things of when she was a little girl. Um, and like she can hear like echoes of a recording just a little bit in her head of them, but it's like it's it's like if you like did a little stop motion animation with like each image kind of starts overlaying a little bit. Um, and she sees her fighting with her sister Jackie when Mary was nine and Jackie was thirteen. Um, and uh, all of these these little moments in in Mary's life, her sneaking out at night uh, when she was a teenager. Uh, all of the fights she and her sister had and all of like the making up that was there too and all of these things that are that are no longer part of her life um, and she can see briefly yeah. overlaid stuff with her diagnosis uh, finding out she has ALS and, and only has a few more years to live um, how she initially reacted to that which was badly and how she's reacted to it now and in this is all happening I think within the first few seconds and then she breathes and all she feels is that residual adrenaline rush that comes like after you've done something <laughs> like frightening or very, very exciting. And the sense of clarity that she has. Um, mm -hmm. And she wheels her way out of, of, of the kitchen. Um, uh, I think with, with a little bit more strength than she had before. Um, she comes out into uh, the main event space. Everyone is going nuts, but it feels almost like they're moving in slow motion a little bit to her. For, for some reason, like she starts laughing. <laughs> like everyone's <laughs> freaking out about spiders or monsters or, uh, you know, 
their their spouse cheating on them. I I don't know what people are freaking out about when you're that rich, but people people are starting to get nuts. Uh, Like, I think they're. Uh, you know, they're attacking each other in some cases. They're like, uh, you know, like clawing at their own faces. They're like trying to like tear their clothes off because they can't breathe. Um, it, it's it's sort of pandemonium. And I think it's just illuminate. Like the only light here is just what was what's coming in off the street through the windows. Uh, so it's this, just this dimly lit scene of just like writhing, panicked bodies. She is high and is kind of laughing. Just walk. She, she still in the back of her mind is hoping that the rest of the staff are okay. But there's something really delightful seeing all of these rich assholes lose their minds and they sit here and they do uh these little charity events and miri doesn't see any of that money uh what one of these plates could easily pay for oh, a couple of procedures it, for is, her is this specifically an als fundraiser oh god is it Yes, we can say that it is. Yeah. And yeah, uh, think, that's juicy, David. Uh, I, I think she's just thinking about the entrance fee into this thing, the plates. Literally all of this could pay for her treatment for three lifetimes. Um, and uh, she's just laughing at them now. There's this weird it's that weird high feeling, but it's not like she's just laughing at nothing. Like she fully understands what's happening here. And whatever this has unlocked in her, she she would normally have found this maybe a little bit horrifying, but now that she's uh, inhaled some of the fear gas, that inhibition is gone. That, yeah. that, that like inhibitor that would prevent her from being like, oh no, this isn't right. Like, people are in pain, that seems to have been suppressed. Like, there's a little voice in the back of her head being like, just because you like this doesn't mean it's right, but right now, god damn, is it funny and a little bit satisfying. Yeah. Uh, And I think you, you're sort of, like, looking around, you're you're laughing, uh, and you spin around, and there is this figure, this scarecrow standing in front of you with this burlap mask uh, with, uh, I think, you know, the, the gas uh, the gas mask attachments, critically. Um, and he says, You see? Do you see now? Look at it! Look at all of them! Have you ever seen anyone, Miss Mary Ripley, be so completely themselves? I think I'm seeing it right now. And she's like looking up at at his uh, mask and uh, it's a nice outfit. I told you it was a little theatrical, but it has the intended effect. Well, you did not lie. This stuff, oh, it does something. It does, it does indeed. Note, every single one of them a different reaction, including you. Ah, uh, you noticed. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. And you said that you weren't really good at telling jokes, but this is hilarious. They're fundraising for my disease. <laughs> 
and they could have all paid for me. We should have just done that. But this guy's freaking out about spiders eating his face instead. That's funny. Yes. I'm glad you see the humor. <laughs> see, this is what I'm saying. This, this is what people are. And they go out and they put on a big show. At the end of the day, you tear it all back. You tear away their fancy clothes and their fancy food and whatever money they're throwing at their useless causes that they don't care about in the first place. And underneath all of that is this. Just this. So what do you do next? You just leave them to scream? Observation is a key part of any experiment. Of course, they are extremely wealthy, and I do need funds from these rich. So, uh, and he just sort of like reaches over to some guy who's like trying to like, uh, like uh, swat, I don't know, beetles away from him, uh, and and just sort of like takes his watch and pockets it. <laughs> Miri watches this for just a little bit before wheeling over, and there's a bit of hesitation before she grabs some lady's wallet and just sort of, like, gives this very sheepish look as she, like, looks through it just a little bit, and there's there's some, some funds in there that she could take before she nicks the bracelet, maybe, I think, a, a, a gold bracelet off of this woman's wrist as well. Um, I think she's actually going to try to talk to some of these people, too. This is like a very accusing tone, I think, as she goes around to all of them, being like, you could have been doing so much more. Um, you wouldn't be in this position if any of you had really cared. Um, because she's taking this as an opportunity to be like, if they ever come down from this, she wants them to remember the stuff that they could do better when this is over. Yeah, and there are and, uh, a lot worse things start, to be afraid of than spiders. People start pleading with you. You know, swearing up and down. You know, yes, of course, I'll just make it stop. Make it stop. I'll change tomorrow. I'll, I, what, whatever you want. I'm a, I'll be a changed person and just make it stop. Whatever you want. Whoa. That's an intense rush that Mary gets from that. Um, she can't stop it. She doesn't know how, but uh, she she definitely hears that and she's wondering if that'll actually stick. There's only one way to prove that, though. That's to let it run its course and find out what happens. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, so uh, she continues taking some money and stuff and uh, puts putting it in her own bag, I guess. So. You understand. You see what this really means. What I've trying to what, what I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> you, uh, you didn't do this because you knew I was working this job, did you? Coincidence is a funny thing, Miss Ripley. Yeah, hell of a drug. Um, yeah, I think she takes another, she pulls out the respirator again and breathes. Um, and and pulls it back. It's like I brought my own supply, though. Hope that's not rude. Not at all. You have Miss Ripley, the most fascinating reaction to this compound of anyone I have studied. 
So I'm gonna get that credit in the dissertation paper after all? If you want it, it's yours. Sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, she is quite literally like blinking away the images that are like threat like they're always threatening to like overtake her vision it's just she's pushing them away like she always does like she already did everything that she's afraid of she's lived through already it's just echoes but they they like they offer they offer clarity not fear anymore she can just see them as reminders. Um, and she's getting really high now because it's like still coming down from the vents. And uh, um, and she also is like pulling it from her own <laughs> from her own uh, oxygen tank. Um, yeah. And uh, she's a little bit loopy, a little bit like she just drank too much, kind of. Uh, it's just removing your inhibitions. Um, and she's just completely now listen I can understand doing it to people like these but you think you can let the staff go they have actual things to be afraid of hmm conflict dice For yeah sure. yeah uh, am I rolling I think I, or are you rolling I think it's Jonathan's conflict isn't it or am I rolling kind of to persuade? Right. Is it is it a persuasion roll or is it a roll on his end? Which one do we like more? I don't know. Um, let's treat it as a persuasion roll. I kind of like that. Okay. So then I'll then I'll successful, roll it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I do feel like the answer to this has very serious oh. implications. It does. I rolled a four, out. a six, and a six. So that is a success. Okay. Cool, a success. Uh, so, uh, Crane kind of, you know, looks around you towards the, uh, towards the kitchen, uh, shrugs. Very well. I've had, I've gathered plenty of data tonight. No need for excess. And Thanks. He, uh, he walks over um, and uh, swipes open the, like, sweeps open the door uh, and says to the, uh, the guys who are guarding it, Gentlemen, the people in this area are no longer part of our experiment. They're free to go. And the guys kind of shrug, move aside, and the staff is free to leave. That's interesting. I wonder if anyone is concerned if Miri isn't leaving. Hmm. Uh, I wonder if this is another. Yeah, who? Because I'd love to roll for it almost, but that that's not really within the bounds of the rules to see if somebody's about to do something stupid because they think Miri is staying behind <laughs> to bargain for them to leave. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Let, uh, let's let's roll it. Why the why the hell not? Yeah. Uh, do you want to do it this I'll, time? Yeah, I'll, I'll roll. I'll roll. It's not really anyone we're, we're playing, but it is a conflict amongst nope, nope. ourselves. That's, that's All failures. So Damn. I think for sure uh, somebody tries to uh, tries to, to take Miri with them. Uh, oh, man, I love that that's the failure condition. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you think it should be the other way around? No, no. I think you make a decision on this one. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think uh, 
I think somebody, uh, one one of the staff, uh, is like, Miri, come on. <sighs> they're letting, they're letting no. us go. I know. I'll catch up with you. Don't worry about it. You'll catch up? Like, come on, we gotta get out of here. Yeah. No, I'm fine. You'll be fine. Just go. Uh, and yeah, this person looks at Scarecrow, looks at the the guards, and just can't can't figure this out, and just ducks out the door with everybody else. That was sweet. I think um... very very thoughtful of them to think of you. Uh... But I think you're exactly where you want to be, right? Am I right? Well, if I want that credit in that paper, I figure I have to stay at least for the end of the experiment, right? At least. <laughs> so we're we just going to watch them tear each other apart? kind of barbaric. It is, isn't it? That's why we do the work. The rise above it. <laughs> we do the work. Sorry, am I um am I getting paid for this? <laughs> Cuz uh this they're and certainly he- not going to pay me anymore. He gestures to uh, your spoils. Uh, I think you have a lap full of filthy lucre, Miri. You, oh got, yeah, uh, I guess that you know, does You've got count. a couple of purses, some bracelets, some. Uh, well, I just want to know if I'm getting benefits because you have a team out there. Are they getting like healthcare? <laughs> we can talk. Oh, right, I forgot. <laughs> you don't know when I'm being sarcastic. Uh, I think she honestly is having, starting to have trouble blurring uh, of, of being capable of seeing what is reality and now what is just sort of floating around in her head. <laughs> um, she, yeah. like, cocks a, 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 a glance at him is just so, do I need to get a costume? <laughs> Couldn't hurt. <laughs> uh, I honestly, I think Mary again just starts kind of laughing at that. Um, and I, I wonder if that's where it ends. I think that's it. I think we kind of, you know, we pull back on this scene of uh, mayhem in this uh, in this gala hall um, with uh, Miri and Crane standing in the doorway observing. Uh, and we pull out uh, and we start to see the flashing lights of siren or of uh, police uh, police lights what's the word I'm looking for siren isn't the light it's the noise um, well light we is the, the light <laughs> yeah light is light uh, we see the flashing of police lights and we start to hear the, the wail of sirens uh, kind of spinning up off in the distance. I think that's where we cut it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Cool. All right. Uh... Great. Having a normal (laughs) one. All right. Cool. Okay. (sighs) So what, uh, what, 
bonus dice do we want to uh, award? Definitely you get one for letting them go. Yeah. For, for letting the staff go, for sure. Okay. Cool. Um, um, I'm trying think... to think if you might you yeah, might get ahead. another one. No, go ahead. I think that might be it. I'm just thinking. Um, I think... Uh, I feel like Mary gets at least three. Uh, oh, Jesus there's gotta Christ. Be one, there's got to be one for the completely unique reaction to the fear gas uh, which is extremely interesting to Crane there's got to be one for um, for her reaction to seeing the fear gassed elite right uh, and I think there has to be one for going one further and actually participating in the crime and actually starting to take things off of these, you know, yeah, rich motherfuckers. So, I think at least three. I'm giving you another one, too. I'm going to do it kind of retroactively for ha- Crane in their first meeting, giving Miri that canister. Um, because she's clearly used it once before coming to this event and obviously had some sort of revelation behind that um, that yeah. she that, that, that she thought was very freeing that I am going to want to explore at another time that we can probably do very briefly when Miri comes back again in the future yes that's yes, for our I, audience I, I, wink my thoughts exactly okay yeah. cool so I have two uh, and I'm rolling six you have three, three and you're rolling Jesus. seven rolling seven well, at least I can't okay. break even interesting <laughs> I failed yeah mine uh, failure Overall, I failed as well. This is interesting. interesting. Okay. I have two. You have so, none. Yeah. So you have two. I have none. Uh, what's the uh, game mechanics final tally in this case? Um. Oh yeah. I think it's. I think let me hit resolution it's literally if we become actively more distant we didn't fill our attraction meter okay so I think in in this case since I have two I think there is something about Crane that is interesting to Miri. I don't think it's reached the threshold of like, we're not friends, but I'm not openly hostile. And there's clearly something that he has that I like in terms of the drug. (laughs) I think Miri wants that again. Um, Miri is going to want a supply of that. Um, but I don't know if she's really a full believer, but she definitely believes that this is a great punishment tool for people that don't do anything that they should do. But she doesn't quite believe that it should be used on everyone indiscriminately, given how she behaved with the staff. Yeah. And she still had the wherewithal to have them be released from this. I think... I think the failure state for Crane is... I think the failure state for Crane is obsessiveness. No, oh, dear I, God. I think it goes back to that determined condition, uh, that determined trait that we established earlier. And he is... 
he is still not convinced that Miri gets it and is absolutely is like hell bent determined to get this one person to really truly understand like he thinks you're so close but you keep just not quite getting there uh, I, I, think it was, like... I think it's very specifically because at the end of this escapade this last one I think ultimately Miri does turn down the offer to explicitly join his operation. And that, I think, that I think drives him into a a bit of obsessive. uh, Yeah, he wants to like put her in a jar and study her. Towards her. Yes, he definitely wants to put her in a jar and study her, but I think there's also this element of, like, this is the only person who, either either this is the only person who I could make understand me, or if I can just get this one person to really understand me, that proves the project is valid. Jesus. Well, that's going to be great for later. Yeah, I I think that's what it is. Wow. All right, cool. That is a very interesting and unexpected outcome. Yeah. A yeah. kind of it's better yeah. than I think anything we could have planned for. Right? That's why you play the game. I know. All right. Uh so uh let's uh let's sign off for this one yeah uh, <laughs> yeah thank you everybody for joining us here on manipod studios for streets of gotham uh we run our normal episodes mondays at 8 p.m eastern we have a new episode normally every other monday uh with reruns in between with a live chat next couple of weeks we just got back to back to back Gotham coming at you to deal with some uh, behind the scenes scheduling stuff. So uh, we have this special uh, mini episode uh, where uh, where we learned a lot of interesting things. Next week we are right back into the ongoing action uh, with the whole crew uh, continuing their escape from Arkham Asylum. Week after that. We're back. We're still here. We're doing it. Picking right up. Rolling along. And then the week after that, we'll have a rerun. Week after that, we'll be back to another live episode. So next two weeks, tune in. Monday's here at 8 p.m. We will have all new Gotham every week coming at you for a little bit. Um, You can also go over to youtube.com slash Studios to watch past games. We have the whole original Escape from Arkham series that inspired all of this up there. Uh, New episodes of Streets of Gotham. We're uploading them on Fridays, so if uh, you're not able to catch something live, uh, you can always check the VOD right here on Twitch, or you can go over to YouTube and watch it over there following Friday. Um, And if you do that, like, you know, give us like a little like, That'll be good. We like that. (laughs) That'll make us feel nice. Um, Once again, uh, I've been David. You can check out my tabletop RPGs over at dbb-8.itch.io, including In the Dark, which is the simplified multi-setting version of Blades in the Dark that we normally play on Streets of Gotham. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter at Brutman. And that covers it for me. Uh, Marcy, what do you got? Yeah, this was such a fun experiment. Um, I we're, we're hoping that we're going to be able to do more little mini sode or maybe even some pre-recorded side scenes in the future, either featuring our main characters doing stuff that you know we can't fit into an episode or stuff like this, where it's side characters that enhance the world. So this was our first 
a uh, little little foray into doing that. It was a lot of fun. I hope other members of the cast get a chance to do this. Um, and definitely tune in for those. Um, yeah, uh, well, uh, if you're not sick of us now, tune in tomorrow for Flights of Fandom. Uh, we're both going to be in it. Um, and we're very excited because we're doing uh, Star Trek uh, for all of August. Uh, we've got a lot of fun. We're doing multiple systems. Uh, it's going to be very episodic. Uh, so definitely be sure to check us out tomorrow, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. That'll be our very first episode. Um, and uh yeah, if you're still not t- entirely done with me after that, well, then <laughs> I'm in another show on here uh, called The Hole in the World, an Invisible Sun uh, set game. Well, that was a fun way for me to say it. Um, it also just recently got nominated for the New Jersey Web Fest in the inaugural category for live play shows. Um, we're very excited about that. Um, all of those episodes uh, of previous are up on YouTube if you want to catch up. We're on hiatus right now. Uh, we're coming back in two weeks to do a special little interlude one shot, and we think we're coming back for real top of October. But stay tuned for more information on that. Follow our Twitter, join our Discord, email us if you want to play with us. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Cool. Yep. Thanks, Marcy. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time on Streets of Gotham. Night. <laughs>